סאם. That's me. בני. בני סאם. סאם has these ideas. He, he came up with all kinds of philosophical breakthroughs, like does nature exist? And here I am, בני, with נירה. planning on going to the English countryside to, to see all the places where Wordsworth and Coleridge and Tennyson worked and walked and, uh, you know, uh, Charles Lutwich Dodgson, who is better known as Lewis Carroll or Jane Austen, and you raise the question, does nature exist? Of course it exists. We are putting all our money in going to that trip to see the nature. Which is precisely what's wrong with the concept of nature. You are going there as observers. Yes. Not as part of nature, but as observers of nature. Definitely. It's as if men and nature are not the same thing. As if there, there were some external entity which man has nothing to do with and men can observe for. Indeed, the, over, the, over the millennia, there, there, are three, there were three ways. Three ways had evolved. To relate to nature. Of course nature exists in the sense that physical reality exists. But men's relation to physical reality had acquired three, one of three flavors. First there was of course religion. And religion said man has dominion. Man dominates nature and man has the full right to exploit nature and to decide everything from naming nature To maiming nature. Oh. So, man has a right to... Nature is man's property. That was the religious approach. But the religious approach permeates a lot of uh, science as well. Because science regards nature as a resource, in effect. When you say resource, it immediately leads to exploitation. Because what do you do with resources? You exploit them, you use them. It's a relationship of usage. And you have even philosophies within science. For example, the anthropic principle. The anthropic principle says that the cosmos was designed to yield, yield humanity. Like the anthropic principle. principle has nothing to do with entropy. It's, Not it's entropy, about but anthropos, anthropos yes. man. man. So man so at the center. Yes. Man center. Man is the center because the yes. universe was designed to create men yes. and to cater to the needs of men. Okay. Tell, that is a teleo- uh, teleological It's a form of, the, of, of, of cosmic teleology or yes. divine teleology. But these are scientists. They're all physicists. The anthropic principle was created by physicists. So we see that even within science, we have this religious approach. Nature belongs to us. It's our property and we can dispose of it any way we see fit. That's the first approach. The second approach is a romantic approach. Jean-Jacques Rousseau, okay. the noble savage. The noble savage. Uh, nature is, is perfection. It's ideal. ideal. It's beautiful. It's uh, flawless and blemishless and blameless. And, you know, this idealization of nature is, of course, counterfactual. Nature is red in tooth and claw. Nature is cruel and savage. Savages were very far from ideal people, <laughs> to yes. use a British understatement. So the romantic view has nothing to do with real nature. It has to do with a, a, an image of nature, which is essentially a fantasy. Even there, there is a divorce between men and nature, because it's about a fantasy. And the third approach is what, what I call the decoupled, decoupled approach. Like there is men, the observer, Men, the traveler in the British countryside, men, the physicist who observes nature and measures it and quantifies it. And so there is a decoupling approach. Ironically, the decoupled approach, where men is active, nature is passive, like in a museum, the decoupled approach started with idealism. Uh, when, when the idealists, from Descartes to Hegel, when they said reality is actually only in the mind. They denied, they denied nature. They denied reality and they denied physic- physicalism or materialism. And so they went the furthest in decoupling men from nature because they said the only reality is in your, in your head. Mm-hmm. The rest 
So there is only man. There's only man. The rest doesn't exist. It's a totally solipsistic view. Whichever way you choose, the religious domination narrative or scientific domination narrative, the romantic narrative, the decoupled observer observed schism, whichever way you choose, there is no nature. There's no such thing as nature because if you dominate nature, it's not nature, it's a resource. If you, if you um, decouple yourself from nature, then there's no nature, only you exist. And if you are romantic about nature, then it's not nature, it's your fantasy. Man had, has yet to come with a way to relate to nature, actually, <laughs> believe it or not. Even environmentalism is an offshoot of the romantic movement. It's a form of romanticism. Really? Of course, environmentalism is a form of, it's not a science, it's romanticism. It's, it's idealizing, uh, believing that nature has some homeostatic equilibrium ideal state. That can do with, that doesn't need man or that, that would be better off without man. Either that, that is, that is what is called radical or deep, deep uh, environmentalism. These are the extremists. But the, the uh, environmentalism has two elements in effect. Man has an agency to change nature, to restore it, for example. To, to uh, safeguard it. Safeguard it. But if you stop to think about it, that's a patronizing approach. It's the same old religious scientific domination narrative. Okay. Only you are a benign dictator. Yes, yeah, yes, exactly. You're, a benign you're dictator. an enlightened tyrant. Enlightened di dictator. Yeah. You, you are not destroying nature, you are nurturing nature, you are right. restoring okay. nature. But that still means that you own nature and control nature to do with as you please. Okay. It's still this narrative and coupled with romanticism. Because the environmental movement, on, in all its strands, even the deep environmental movement, they say that there was a period, there has been a period where nature was different and better, like an ideal period. And all we need to do is revert. We need to just go back there. And we need to go back there by eliminating human, human agency and presence, or by modifying human agency and presence and so on. It is still anthropocentric. Still man is at the center. It's like we decide everything. We, we are the masters of nature. The question is, is there another possibility? The problem is that we had failed to relate to nature because we are nature. As long as we refuse to accept that this distinction is totally artificial, then we, we, we can revert to one of these three positions. Okay, so you, the what you're saying is that we are, we are nature. This sounds like a shallow cliche, but it's not. Because when I say we are nature, I mean these cameras are nature. A beaver, a beaver builds dams. Yes. Ants build mounds. Right. We build high rises. We build cameras. This is nature. I see. All our technologies, everything is nature. We are our our products are as natural as the products of bees. Bees create honey. You wouldn't say they are not natural. They have a honey factory, you know. Factories, cameras, automobiles, television sets, smartphones, fa I mean, everything is, is totally natural. Okay. When we start to look at nature this way, then I think we will lose, I hope we will lose, these three dysfunctional ways of looking at nature, which are essentially a power play. These ways, the romantic way, the domin domineering or domin domination way, and the decoupled way, they are power plays. Who is in charge? Who is the... Who is the so how do we, how do we uh, mend our ways according to, your, to your view? I am saying that there's no such thing as artificial. That it's an artificial distinction to say there's natural and artificial. Everything humans create, uh, so that leads to, to um, a prescription. Nature, as long as we decouple from nature, nature is fighting back. Nature is fighting back in three ways. A Malthusian way, hmm. Malthusian way, epidemics, pandemics, wars. This is a lack, a lack of food, this was the... Famine, yes. yes. This is nature's way of winnowing humanity out, culling humanity, reducing the numbers and so on and so forth. This is one way, one mechanism. There is a mechanism of assimilation. We assimilate 
the damage that we do. If we pollute, if you pollute the air, you breathe this air. So you assimilate this destruction. It becomes self-destruction. Okay. So nature is fighting back our negative agency, neg entrop uh, entropic agency. It's fighting back in a Malthusian way, reducing our numbers. But it also forces us to, to digest and assimilate the outcomes of our pernicious activity. Why? Because we are nature. Whatever we are doing to a tree, you are doing to yourself. It's, yes, uh, yes. This, and this, and, but there's a third way. And the third way is the cognitive way. We are endowed, endowed with cognition. So, for example, we invented the contraceptive pill. Contraceptive pill had reduced the number of humans more than all wars and famines and pandemics combined. True. Combined. <clears throat> and it's our invention. We invented it. Why? Because we are part of nature. If it is nature's interest to control our numbers, okay. because we are part of nature, because we are nature, we are going to control our numbers. We are nature's agents and we are an integral part of nature. If nature has a will, metaphorically speaking, if nature has a will, we are that will. <laughs> if nature wants to reduce our numbers, it will send us a virus. But it will also send us the contraceptive pill. It will also send us uh, homosexual um, uh, 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 um, car accidents. I mean, or homo homosexual or homosexual uh, uh, sexuality. Yes, or car accidents. So, in other words, if nature wants us wants uh, wants to limit our activity and especially our, our nefarious activity, it's going to use a variety of agents, including us. We are also nature's agents in this sense, exactly like a virus. So all you're saying is that we should be aware of the fact that man and nature are one and we're actually acting in the world that is one. Yes, and, and this not, has two implications. Not di 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 dichotomic. This is two implications. One, everything we do is natural. Everything we produce is natural. Enough with this nonsense. You know, this, artificial. this is artificial, this is natural, factories are not good, uh, cars are not good, uh, I don't know. This is nonsense. Everything we produce and do is, by definition, natural. Should nature wish to somehow limit our activities, redirect them, transform us, mm -hmm. it has its ways. Okay. And its greatest agent is us. Is us. We. Nature is going to use us to limit us because he, we are nature. So if nature wants us to limit the population, it will send us a virus, but it will also send us the contraceptive pill. It is nature that sent us the contraceptive pill, not Pincus and Jurassic. Nature did it. It used the agency of Pincus and Jurassic, but it was nature that did this. I have a metaphor strengthening maybe your theory. If a Martian came along and looked at what happens here on the globe, uh, he or she <laughs> would see uh, small particles going along veins and stopping somewhere and then they would pick up this car and say, oh, this is an interesting organism. It has a nucleus which probably controls this yeah. thing. Yeah. It's beautiful, yeah. And, and this, this is the nature of this globe. And should the Martian come here and submit a report, of course, to the Martian High Council, uh, the report will say there are numerous life forms on this planet and uh, one of them is, and they will make a list and there will be gorillas and chimpanzees and, and one of the life forms will is be humans. Or, or no, cars. No, with, uh, with human nuclei. They will, I think, ultimately realize that cars are, are manufactured by this life. Form. Okay, okay. But let's assume that they're highly intelligent. But they will list humans as one of the life forms. And yes. they will say beavers create dams. Um, okay. Uh, you know, bees create hives. Uh, and human beings create cars. You know, they, they will, it will not occur to them that there is some privileged position to, to a specific organism. So if we refer to the first question, does nature exist? You say, of course, nature exists. Uh, 
but not the way we see it. But not, not as, distinct from as, us. As distinct from us, yeah. but we are part of it. We, and are, we are nature. Whatever we do, we should be... Does nature exist? Yes, yes. it does. Of course it does. It's are. sitting opposite me. Yes. <laughs> of course. Enjoy your trip. Thank you.